Okay, we're going to, uh, I'm going to do another video for you. All my, again, my fans, my extended family, those of you who know who I'm talking to. And we will continue on because you disbelieve all so many things and we're going to continue to show you. Um, first part I'm going to do again about stuff with me that relates to me, who I am. Then I will go on to Old Testament prophecy so I can show you the events that are currently happening in our world that you can be sure that what's where it's coming from. First of all, Romans chapter 7 verse 15. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate to do, that I do. Drugs, sex. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that in me there is my flesh. Nothing good dwells for it to will present with me. But how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do I do not do. But the evil I will not to do that I practice. For if I do what I will not to do, it is not longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. I find then that the law that evil is present within me to the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity into the law of sin which is in my members. I thank God for Christ, O oh Lord, then is with myself in the law of God, but with the flesh of sin. I think you can see what that is. Moving on. First Corinthians chapter 1. Though I speak with the tongues of man and with angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass and a symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so I could remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. Then nobody loves me, nobody cares about me. You see to that. So all of these things don't matter. Moving on. Chapter 1. Verse 3, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give to my body to be burned, but have no love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long in its kind, love does not envy, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does to rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes, hopes, and all things, endures all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail, whether there are tongues, they shall cease, whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away, for we know in part that we will prophesy in part, but when in which which is perfect has come with that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, and I understood as a child, as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know as just as I am known to you. And now, amen, faith and love in these things, three. And you can't tell me that you don't understand. Moving on. Next. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, and lewdness, sorcery, hatred, tenacious, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, disinterestedness, heresies, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, the the self-control against there is no such law, and those who are in Christ have been crucified in the flesh in their desires. Thank you. Amen. Back to me, James. Chapter 2, verse 19. You believe that there is one God, and you do well. Even the demons believe, and they tremble, but they do not obey. Chapter 3, verse 6, James. And the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. 
but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God. Don't I say I'm vomiting, vomiting all the time with my tongue, mouth? Yes, it's full of deadly poison. I'm doing all kinds of things with my words, yes. For with the curse of men, for they have been made to the sublimitude. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things not all to be. Who is wise and understanding among you? First James. Thank you. Moving on. Now I'm going to do Old Testament prophecy <coughs> so that you can clearly see that the Lord God is truly who and what He says He is and you all, non-believers and scoffers, are smart for judgment because you're going to see now I'm going to show you through these prophecies 3,000 years ago. We will start with this. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 13. Remember his covenant for forever the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed to Jacob for a statute of Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give you the land of Canaan and allotment of your inheritance when you were in few in number, indeed in few, and went from one nation to the other and a kingdom to another kingdom. We are talking about who? The covenant is the state of Israel, but yet it didn't exist until when? 1948. So that right there establishes the fact that they do have a covenant with the God Almighty. They do have a covenant with God Almighty. And He is going to fulfill His word. Okay? So then we're going to go to skip ahead to Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 4 and the Lord has said to you all his servants and prophets rising early and sending them but you have not listened nor inclined your ear do not go after other gods to serve them and worship them and do not provoke me to anger with the works of your hands and I will not harm you yet you have not listened to me says the Lord that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands and your own hurt behold I will send and take all your families to the north and the Lord is and Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon my servant and will bring him he's using get it he's using the king ba King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. This is real historical stuff. And don't fucking tell me I know and you can go look it up, bitch. But trust and believe this is really happening. It did happen just like this. This information was recorded over hundred years. Uh, at least, no, this information was recorded 20 or 30 years before the events took place. That is what we do know. Now watch. Uh, I will send you Nebuchadnezzar and the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, Israel, uh, which the kingdom of Israel that was back then, against the land and inhabitants and all nations, utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and a perpetual des desolation. And this whole land shall be a desolation and astonishment, and th these nations shall serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. Then it will come to pass, when 70 years are completed, that I will punish the king of Babylon and the nation and the land of the Chaldeans for their iniquity, says the Lord, I will make a perpetual desolation. Okay, well, well, well. What do we know from history? In the year 550 BCE, in fact, Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon came to Israel, took the, the Jews hot slaves, brought them back to Babylon, and in exactly 70 fucking years to the day, in the year 480 BCE, for whatever reason, history does not know, but we dug it up. Babylon was just utter death, like it says, utter desolation. I will punish the kingdom of Babylon for their iniquity and leave them utter desolation, completeness. Like, overnight. So you tell me, how are you going to explain that? There's no nuclear weapons. It looks like a nuclear bomb was detonated on the kingdom of Babylon. That is what we found when we dug it up. The archaeologists and the historians were confounded. This motherfucking place was huge. It was in a huge empire, Babylon. And it existed where Baghdad, Iraq is, right outside of there. Okay, and my gosh, 
this place was leveled and it happened right at the time that this says that it happened in the year 480 BCE is when it occurred. History and science cannot confirm for us how it happened. They only know that it did. But this book is telling you what did it. There could be no other reason. Are you seriously going to challenge the power that has to do that? God Almighty? That's who's speaking to you. And that's who you're going to reckon with. And don't worry about it. He is going to have the last word on you. And you will be sorry. I feel very bad for you. But you have to eat this. Okay, let's move forward. Jeremiah um, 34, 34, 13. Okay, right. Thus saith the Lord, Jeremiah th uh, chapter 34, verse 13. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I make a covenant with your fathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage, saying, This is, of course, occurring. This information is being recorded after that 70 year period when they came back and then Babylon was destroyed. Prophet Jeremiah is now re prophesying to them, the, the returnees, the captives that went away and came back. Because God had let them free in 70 years. That's what he said he was going to do. And then destroy Babylon. And he did. And this is confirmed through history. Then they came back. But then this happened. At the end of seven years, every man set his plate and sold him. But for your fathers did not obey me or incline their ear. Then you turned around and profaned my name. And every one of you brought back his male and female slaves. Me and therefore, thus saith the Lord, you have not obeyed me in proclaiming liberty and everyone to his brother. Behold, I proclaim liberty to you, says the Lord, to the sword, to pestilence, and to famine, and I will deliver you into trouble to all the kingdoms of the earth. I will give you into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of those who seek your life. Their dead bodies shall meet for the birds in the heaven and the beasts of the earth. Behold, I will command, says the Lord, cause them to return into this city. They will fight against it and take it and burn it with fire, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation and inhabitant. And what happened? The Jewish dysphoria occurred at that time he scatters them all over the world which is the reason why Jews are in every single fucking country all over the goddamn planet yes and they always have been but they were brought out of the land and this I'm getting to that point okay so he scatters them and this is also all very true and accurate if you're a dumb dumb I'm sorry go look it up but believe me sweetie I know in history it was my major in college so don't worry about it I'm just the one to tell you you can eat this shit because you have to have it and you're gonna gag on it but this definitely occurred so you're gonna tell me that from 3,000 years ago and then these events are taking place and this book is telling you what it is and you still can't believe <laughs> yeah all right that's a t that's a um, gamble that I'm not willing to make because I'm not that risky. I know who he is and I know his power and believe me, I'm not going to be bothered to uh, take up against it because you can't bother to do it. You're dumb. I never pick a battle I can't win. Alright, so... 36, Ezekiel. Now, let's move forward. Ezekiel Chapter 36, verse 22. Therefore saith the house of Israel. This is recorded, I told you, 3,000 years ago. To, this is the prophet Ezekiel now talking in, in verse chapter 36, verse 22. Therefore saith the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations where you went. Before I just read to you, you will profane, and you profaned in all the nations where I sent you to the kingdoms around the world. And he scattered them, and that's what he did. So now Ezekiel is coming, this is about five, six hundred years later, but still this is 2,500 years ago. <laughs> and he's telling this information. Again, God saying that they, the ones he scattered, have profaned in all the places they went. And Jews, that's why Hitler was killing them and putting them in ovens, and the Italians and the Spanish kicked them out everywhere they went, all throughout history, all the nations that the Jews were ever in, they were always marginalized, always penalized, always fucked, and just problems, 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 everyone hates the Jews because of the shit that they do, and their God is telling you all about their fucking evil shit, his own chosen people, yes, they're unbelievable, and they cause all kinds of problems everywhere they go, and that's why they get fucked, 
And now their God says, I, thus saith the Lord, I do not do this for you. What? I'm going to tell you. O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake. Meaning, because he proclaimed that covenant, I told you, God is a just God. And he says that he's a just God because he fulfills his promises. His covenants are a promise. So that was the first thing I read to you in Chronicles. He says, I establish a covenant between you and Abraham for the everlasting covenant to have the land, the little piece of shit land, Israel for my people. And that is his promise. So now he's fed up. After he's done, put them in slave, taking them out, let them go, scattered them around the world. And now he's thousands of years ago prophesying what he's going to do and saying that it's not because of what they did because they're fucked up evil. Always the Jews fucking up and he can never be dealing with them. So he says, I'm not doing it for your ugly, stupid asses. I'm doing it for my name because I made a promise. And this thing's winding up, so I got to reestablish your little fucking piece of shit Israel land because, God damn it, I said I would do it, and the latter days are coming, and I don't have a choice. <laughs> okay, and he says, for I, this is Ezekiel 36, verse 24, for I will take from you among all the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you to your own land. After World War II, what happened? We, in 1948, they established the little country of Israel, <laughs> and all the peoples from all the nations and around the world, all the Jews, they went back to their little homeland. That's what it says right there 3,000 years ago. God saying it. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase your fields so that you need never again bear reproach of famine among the nations. Nor for your sake do I do this again. Not for your sake. Let it be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways. O house of, house of Israel. The desolate land shall be tilled instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass by. So they will say this land that was desolate and become like the Garden of Eden and the waste the desolate and ruined cities are now fortified and inhabited. Now, what does that mean? Well, go look. Have you ever been to Israel? Well, I have. In any ways, you can go find out that fucking place, Palestine, the whole area called Palestine, Israel, Palestine, whatever. It's <laughs> nothing to look. These Palestinians and, and Jews are fighting over this one piece of shit ass land. But, dude, it's like the Arabian Peninsula forever. It has always been nothing but desert, and that's it. You can't grow food there either. Just no trees, nothing. I mean, even when Jesus was walking around and doing his things, back in those days, it was just very little of anything. And then God, of course, says, uh, he said he's going to make it desolate and ruined forever. Back in Jeremiah, <laughs> and he did. So the Arabs who were in possession of that land for all the thousands of years before 1948, before he brought them back, were always living in that land of Palestine as desolate ruins that couldn't grow anything. And he says, here, but I will make it that your land shall be tilled instead of lying desolate. When he brings them back, he's going to do that so that they will say that the land is desolate and become like a garden of Eden, all the Arabs. And what happens today? Then the nations which are left around you shall know that I am the Lord who have rebuilt the ruined places and planted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and I will do it. And what do the Arabs all say about the Jews and how fucking mad they are? Oh, yes, they are. Why? That's what they say. How the fuck are they? Do you know that the little teeny shit country of Israel now, currently, right now, exports almost one-third of the produce to Europe? And you gonna tell me this shit is bullshit, motherfucker? This is so goddamn precise? What in the hell? You are dumb. He says exactly this is what he's going to do thousands of years ago. The people around you say they can't believe it. A land of desolation. That's exactly what it was. Mountains and rock and nothing but dirt. And the Arabs could never grow food there. Never had the Jews. He brings them back. And he says, and then I will make your land grow everything. And, free. and then now they're exporting third, one third of the produce to Europe. My God. On that little land. Cultivating and everything. But well, come on. Amen. We're going to move forward. You can us up with this power. Then just know you're going to eat it before you fuck with it. You're fucking with it already. And he knows everything that I'm doing and everything that you're doing already. And he's just loving you to hear all this shit, spoon pointing it into you. If you can't get it, if you choose to reject it, that's okay. Nobody cares because you're going to vomit and gag all over it and see for what it is. And you're going to be trembling. It says, that's why I said in James, one of my book, James... 1 James verse 20, uh, chapter 22, even the devils believe and demons tremble, but they do not obey. 
because they believe in God and they know who it is. But still, they know, but they don't care. Okay. Again, in chapter 37, Ezekiel says, Again, he said to me, prophesy to those... Okay, hold on. Uh, Dysphoria. Right, now, moving on. After he establishes them, let's go to Psalm 83. Right. Psalms 83 says... They have taken crafty counsel against... So this is Psalm chapter 83, verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. Oh, wow. What is that? 1967, the Six-Day War. Confederacy is the key word. This is what happened. It says... They have consulted together and they are one consent and have formed a confederacy. Who's they? Egypt, <laughs> Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Jordan, Syria, all of them invaded little Israel in 1967, the Six Days War. Israel whipped their butts. All of them. But here it is in the Psalms prophesying that war, the 1967 war. This was the first conflict after Israel was established in 48. Okay, moving forward. <laughs> You're going to see the events happening today. Isaiah 19. Oh, let's go to Isaiah now, another prophet. Because it goes all, we go all over this thing. This is how come you need to know this book. You can't fucking um, know this information if you don't read it. Well, once you read it, like when I did, I learned how to connect dots. Honey, that's what I do. That I am the puzzle person master. Don't you know? That's why I've been winning this fucking game all along. It's too easy. And now I'm putting this puzzle together for you, dumb, dumb asses. Isaiah chapter 19. Uh, here we go. Chapter 19. Okay, yeah. The burden, chapter, Isaiah chapter 19, verse 1, the burden against Egypt. Behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud and will come into the Egypt, and the idols of Egypt totter to his presence, and the heart of Egypt will melt. I will set the Egyptians against Egyptians. Everyone will fight against their brother, and everyone against his neighbor in the city of the city, and the kingdom of the kingdom. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in their midst, and they have caused Egypt to err in all her work, and lies a drunken man staggers on his vomit. Vomit, yeah. And what is that? The revolution in Egypt that just occurred, don't you know? The Arab Spring, they got rid of Mubarak, and this is what occurred. This is moving forward. You just have to skip it around, and then if you read it, then you can connect dots. You go from this prophet to that prophet because it's all encoded in there and it'll give you the specific prophecy and information. God's not going to serve it on a silver platter. you got to read his word in order to connect these dots. And how do we know he's talking about these events in the future? Because in the context of this information, he's always referring to in those days, in the latter days. Duh. In addition to that, he demonstrates Certain events that are talked like, for example, that one, never occurred throughout the history of Egypt. The, the Egyptian empire was eventually dissipated after Alexander conquered it in 330, yeah, and it was over. But it didn't turn Egyptian against Egyptian and da 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 okay, and a perverse spirit among their people. And then after that, it never did until this last revolution that they just had. That's the only time. So moving forward... Isaiah 17, oh, now hear this, Isaiah 17, chapter 17, uh, verse 1, right now as we speak, go turn on your news, the burden against Damascus, behold, Damascus will cease from being a city and it will be a ruinous heap, oh wow, and how do I know that what is going on? <laughs> And in verse 9, this is Isaiah. In that day his strong cities will be forsaken, bow, and in uppermost branch would they be left because the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. How do we know that it's talking about the conflict within Assyria right now that you watch on the news? Because Damascus is the oldest city in the world that has had a continuous living of people inhabiting that city continually since it was first founded in ancient times, back in uh, at least 2000, 3000 BCE. That city has always, always been inhabited. It's never, ever been a heap of ruinous desolation.
A heap of ruins Damascus shall be in those days. And now it's occurring as you speak, as we speak, in your eyes. It's never been a heap of ruin. It's always existed as a city and a powerful one. But he's going to make it a heap of ruin. Watch and vomit on it. It's not finished yet. They're just doing it. That conflict's been going on for a year and a half, don't you know? And it will culminate because these events are converging. And we're going to show you how it's being done. If it says, I'm going to make Damascus will cease from being, it's going to be a ruinous heap. Sounds like a nuclear weapon detonated on it. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, you just have to use your head, think, and connect the dots. Hold on. Oh, oh God. Ezekiel. Now let's flip back to Ezekiel 38. Right? Uh-huh. Right. Now... <laughs> This is the connecting what's going after these events that are currently happening on what's now, what's in the works is this. Chapter 38, verse 2, Son of man, set your face against Gog in the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, the prophecy against him. And say to these things, God, behold, I am against you, O God, the prince of Rosh, and Mehesh, and Tubal. After many days you will be visited, and in the latter years you will come into the land of those who brought you back from the sword and gathered you from many people from the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. And I told you there was nothing but or, a desert there, a desolate nothing. But then they came and they made it, he said he's going to make it nice, and now they're exporting fruit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it had been desolate. We brought out of the nation. I brought them out of the nations, and now then they dwell there safely. You will come up against my people. Who? Magog. He just said. Now, how do we know it's who is it? Meshach and Tubal. It says a prophecy against Meshach and Tubal. Who are they? They were two prophets that lived in the north of the Caucasus, which is where present-day Russia is. So Gog, Magog, is referencing Russia because we know that Meshach and Tubal is a transliteration of the word Moscovites because it's the people that lived in the Caucasus. So he will come, you will come up against my people, that's Russia, like a cloud over the land. It will be in the latter days. I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me and I will be hallowed in you, Gog, before their eyes. Gog, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, and you are whom I have spoken in former days of my servants and prophets of Israel who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them. <laughs> and what's occurring? Russia and Iran, <laughs> yeah? Oh, wow. They are now talking with all the conflict with Iran, having with Russia. Oh, my. Let's skip ahead. All right. Now, flip to Daniel chapter 2, verse 41. Now, this is involving... Listen to this. Chapter one, uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 41. Whereas you saw the feet and toes partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you sow iron mixed with the ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of man, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Okay? Now, what does that mean? It means... Hold on. Chapter 7, verse 7. After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong, and had a huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking into pieces, and trampling the residue of his feet. It was different from all the other beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up out of them, before whom there was the first horn that's plucked out by its roots, and then in the horn there were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth, speaking pompous words. Antichrist. That's what it has to be, because this is information is in reference to the dreams that Daniel, the King Nebuchadnezzar was getting and then Daniel was interpreting. So the clay, toes mixed with clay and iron is a reference, it's a trend, it's an analogy that God always, in, the, in prophetic information, symbolism is always used because visions and dreams are, are that way. So you just have to know what the symbolism means because in this book, these symbols are consistent. If it says waters, it means always, no matter where it occurs. Waters always means many people, tongue nations. Woman always references a church. Um, beasts represent kingdoms and empires. Okay, got it? All right. So we talk about a, uh, this was a statue with a clay mixed with iron. And 
clay, they do not mix, but they will be ten toes, ten kings, ten kingdoms. Got it? European Confederation being reunited in the year 2005, little men signing constitution. Ten member confederation of European Union. Then I saw, he says, with a mouth speaking pompously with one horn that came up, Antichrist. After the ten European Confederation comes into being, which they already are, all these events are simultaneously occurring, people. Just understand. So, how come iron and clay together not mixing? It's the Ten Kingdoms is one part, but the iron and clay is what? It's in reference to church and state. We have a secular political authority in the Ten Kingdom Antichrist Confederation in Europe that is arranging itself now as we speak, and the Vatican sits in the middle and is a participant in it as she always was, so we have to find scripture and information on her. Um, so let's see if we can find scriptural information on this, and we can if we if we ch jump over to the Revelation according to John, which was a prophecy written about uh, 700 years after Daniel, chapter 17, verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness, and I saw the woman sitting on a scarlet beach, which was full of names of blasphemy and having seven heads and ten horns. Again, ten horns. I told you, ten toes, ten horns, ten kingdoms. Okay, Confederation of European States. So it's in reference here in Revelation. You are now being connecting more dots back and back as it's going backwards. Okay? The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned gold and precious stones and pearls, having her cup of gold and filled with abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Her, I told you, woman equals church always. So there you go. She's a church. And who? What church? Well, look at the Vatican. What do you see? The fucking priests and the bishops and everything, their fucking costumes. Always, it's scarlet and purple, always. And what do they have, tiaras and gold and pearls and gems? Yes, okay, yes. And what is her filthy cup of abominations? Killing 150 million motherfucking people during the gold, uh, the dark ages? Yes. Written on her head, mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Oh, oh. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs. That's 150 million she killed. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. But an angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that carries her is the ten, seven heads, ten horns. This is the confederation of European political state that is arranging itself as we speak that Antichrist will be running. And she, the church, Vatican, is being carried by that confederation because she's right in the middle, still calling shots with the false prophet and identifying her as mystery Babylon. And how do we know its reference? Again, what do they wear? The bishops' fish head hats, yes? This comes from Babylon, what she already put, I told you, devastated like a nuclear weapon 5,000, uh, 3,000 years prior than the other prophecy that I read to you. The ten horns, what you saw, are the ten kings who have received no kingdom as of yet, but they receive authority for one hour as the kings with the beast. Again, he's witnessing this prophecy during the reign of John Paul II, who just died in 2004. So John, on Patmos, in 95 AD, watches this vision uh, during the pontificate of John Paul II from 78 to 2004. Okay, and how do we know? Because it says, the ten horns which you saw are the ten kings who have not received the kingdom as of yet, but they will, they will receive and have one hour with the kings with the beast. Okay. Because as it's witnessing John Paul II's pontificate, the European Union was not established yet. That is why he says you, they will have, and then he says, one hour with the beast. Hour is a reference. A day equals one liter, uh, one literal year equals one day in this prop book. Every time this book says a day, it means one year in our world. And when it says an hour, it means... Uh, I'm not sure what an hour means, but it's another denomination of time, and it's it's shorter. Okay, I'm sorry, it's not, it's, it's equivalent. There, there's something, and I cannot remember it, so I'm not going to pretend, but it does have a reference, and I'm just trying to get this done because I'm running out of time. And the woman who you saw is the great city which reigns over the king of the earth. Again, the woman equals church. It always is a church. Woman is church, always. And who you saw is the great city which reigns, which is the great city that reigns, reigns against the, uh, over the kings of the earth. Still, even to this day, the Vatican and the papacy, it always has been for the last 2,000 fucking years. And even when this Napoleon killed her in 1799 and killed the Pope and devastated the church, it says the beast had a deadly wound and then it was healed. Hello. So, when it wasn't healed, well, in 2005, when the little man signed the Constitution, once again reunited under the beast. Where did they sign their Constitution? In the Vatican. Why? Because she's still running shit. 
and that's what this book, what God is saying, yes, that she will be. And that's in the future because it's still being done. And they are reunited. Now you have the teenage confederate. We're waiting for the Antichrist. <laughs> this shit is already, it's been being fulfilled all throughout history, motherfucker. Don't tell me. This book is precise. It's very, very specific. And every single one of the past prophecies has already come true. So the ones that are yet to be coming, you better believe it. There's no possibility I'm going to gamble against it. It has a 100% track record of confirmation. Then I have to know that this stuff is going to occur. Just make no mistake about it. You can bet on it and don't worry about it. I sure know that I already know. Go tell somebody who cares because I know, sweetie, I am not the one. You can do it. Be a fool if you want because you are and you're going to play with fire. I mean, my God, I have a fucking, I told you in my book, James, right here, James, that the tongue is a violent thing. And yes, I, I use it and I shouldn't, but okay, that's just what it is and it's no good but the point is I'm not gonna ever take a battle against something that I can't win forget it that's dumb why would I fight fight a fight that you that you cannot win and you can't win with that what kind of power is that that's beyond your scope and comprehension it's beyond my scope and comprehension but I know one thing I'm going to do what it says because I'm not going to get desolated. I'm not going to get tormented forever in the fucking pit. You can. Have fun. I've already been there. Go ask my brother. We were there together for nine fucking billion years. Don't you worry about it. Yes, we were. And there was no fire. It was cold as ice, but it's the same damn thing. You're either freezing to death or burning to death. What difference does it make? And we were spirits, of course, so there's nothing to put in the agony. You can't fucking fix it. So that's it. And we were just... That's it. It just agony for nine fucking billion years. Don't you tell me. Just don't worry about it. You won't find that information in this book. I know. But we already know that. And that is what and who I am. And I've been telling you all along. But still you don't believe. But still you don't believe. Like my other song tells you all my songs. And you're not listening to the words. I don't know what else you need. I have been doing it for eight damn years. And you think that they pulled me out of a box and yet I'm still able to do this show you that twist you turn you pull you and you want to tell me you think you're doing something to somebody you don't know a thing go tell someone who cares because I know what I'm doing what about you I'm sure that you don't you're blind is you want to tell me how I'm blind and I can't see anything? Oh my, I know, I need my special glasses. Will somebody help me? I'm like Velma on, on Scooby-Doo. Oh my God, my glasses, I can't find anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Just grow up. Are you fucking kidding me? With everything that I can do and all that I know, <laughs> And you are aware of these things because you're always telling me how smart and intelligent I am. Yes, we know. And we don't care, by the way. You already told me a thousand times that I know. Thank you. It's fine. I don't need that and I don't want the compliment, but get it. If that's true and it is, what about any of that makes it possible that I could be blind to that and can't see any goddamn thing when I am who I say I am? A former fallen angel with your goddamn leader as my brother? And yeah, I'm not one now, of course not, but that doesn't matter. I know it all. I can't do it all, but I still know it. So, <laughs> you don't make any sense. Oh, he can do all these things, blah, 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 knows everything, but oh, he's completely blind, doesn't have any clue. Yeah. Right, I am completely unaware. It's just you're tricked. Rip, rip, grow up. I've been tricking you all along by making this performance absolutely without any, any ever. And you're sitting back watching, ha oh, look at da, 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 and you have no idea that I'm doing it to you. As long as you believe what I want you to believe, then this game goes according to my way. It's not been, I can't do certain things, you know that I cannot fight certain things, so I can't do that. But I will take the situation and rearrange it. Yes, I will. I have done so, and I will continue to do so, and that is what's making my brother bananas. So, again, you can go shove it up your ass with your magnanimousness. If that's what you want, I don't want to hear your paltry magnanimousness because shove it up your ass. Thank you very much. I don't need it or want it. I know who I am and I know what I have. Go lick on my brother's butt 
and just eat it. But don't you tell me he's put NutraSweet in that shit. It's still shit and it'll kill you. So whatever you want, but I'm not going to do that. No. If you like, you can continue to eat mine. Vomit, vomit. And I do give it all day long. And yes, you tune in and eat it, eat it, eat it. I know mine's real sweet too. But I'm telling you the truth. I put NutraSweet all over mine too. And you still eat it, but it's shit. Just lies and just complete nothing but twisting and turning nothing ever true. <laughs> yes, not never. Okay, yes, truth. You are getting a whole bunch of it in this one. Yeah, the whole goddamn video ain't nothing but truth. So don't tell me never. <laughs> I'm just talking generally when I'm on stage without this book, okay? Those are the things that may not be true, but okay. It's not all true. It's not all false. It's just you have to figure since you're so slow, my special children of the corn, cursed children, your special children that do not understand how to catch up, we need to help you because you're in the special ed class and it takes you so much that we're giving you so much more, but we have more to come, don't worry, there'll be more surprises in store, all will be revealed, we promise. So anyway, I hope I was able to be helpful for you and um, all of these things. I cannot know if I have been, but nonetheless, we have established some very specific and certain truths that should be baffling your little butt brains off by now, since we can connect all of these dots right inside the hood. And you want to tell me you know something about God? Well, guess what, sweetie? Because he tells me he knows something about you, too. So you just keep going, and he just gonna keep doing what he's gonna do. And just, it's all good. And you can have whatever prize my brother has promised you. And just, I'll be happy with it. Uh... I don't know what it is that he's offered you or what that prize is, but um, I'm willing to bet that, well, see, he told me a long time ago that he had like this plan with uh, another planet and he had sent all these construction crews over there. He showed me all the blueprints, everything, building swing sets, uh, circuses. You know, Ferris wheels, rides of all kinds, cotton candy, it, uh, the whole bit works, all of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. He's just brilliant, just always. And I don't know where the planet is. He wouldn't tell me because he's afraid that I'll go tell. So I said, but anyway, how, are you sure? Because we know that we can't find no planets that you can breathe on. And he goes, don't worry, we don't, it don't, you can't there either. And I said, what? He goes, we're going to build a big, um, like, you know, a bubble over the thing, <laughs> and inside you'll be able to breathe, <laughs> but that's it. And I said, well, what about, like, for light? There's no sun close by, right? And he goes, well, there is, but <laughs> it's not close enough. I said, oh, my God, you're going to freeze to death. He said, no, we got indoor heating inside the bubble. I said, oh, God, thank God. <laughs> and then I, and he said, we can put artificial lights for light. Oh, okay. And we're going to dug tent tunnels and all this. Well, anyway... I was just shocked. It looked impressive. I sure did believe it. And I said, you know, could I, I might be able to go and try. He said he didn't have enough room on the shuttle. And I said, you're lying. There is no shuttle that goes there. And you won't even tell me where. He won't tell me where. And I didn't care. I can't know where it is because he refuses to tell me. And anyways, he has a spaceship. And I know he has one, and he has super booster rockets too, just in case he has to make a fast getaway. <laughs> and he's gonna fly around the universe, get his butt whipped, <laughs> when all the angels are hunting him butt down after they come and fuck this planet. <laughs> he's gonna strap on his super booster rockets and hit the road, buddy. He will not be back. He can tell you I'll be back, but he won't. Just in case. So, But he has a spaceship too, though. He can bring all the people to the new planet that, where he's building the swing sets and stuff and I just I mean it looked really good and he even showed me video of them and they're like literally building it wherever it looked like I mean it could be a Hollywood movie set I don't know <laughs> but you know he does run Hollywood and so he knows you know he probably has the best 
But it looked like a planet from somewhere. It really did. And they had big bulldozers and they were working and flipping building things. <laughs> totally. And so I was convinced, but you know, I kept wondering about like, how the hell is he gonna do this whole like bubble getting it heated and turning the lights on and having oxygen? I mean, come on, how is he gonna get the oxygen inside the bubble? Where's it gonna come from? It's gotta come from plants to produce it and the plants need the sun to grow. And you cannot have artificial oxygen. Have you ever heard of that? Where's he gonna get it from? He's gonna have to put it in fucking compressed oxygen containers and then like, he'll have to have hundreds of millions of them and they'll be coming from where? If this planet goes into, because that's the whole reason why he's making the other planet with the bubble on it, because he knows that this planet's gonna be doomed when the sun gets turned off. I already told you that the sun is gonna be turned off and God said when he does that, it's gonna make this place go down and disintegrate and put you into damnation and everybody fucked. And and so he wanted to move it to another planet. And so where's he going to get the oxygen from if this planet is gone? Then he can't do that. But he never gave me an answer. So that's how come I know he's lying like he always is. See? He can't do it. He said there's no sun around there. And if there is no sun close to that planet, forget it. There's no green plants. There's no oxygen. There's no electricity. There's nothing. You cannot manufacture artificial shit like that. If you wanted to, because honey, if that were the case, then he wouldn't worry about the sun getting turned off and this place going to hell in a handbasket, because then he could artificially just resuscitate the world, <laughs> and then you could keep it, because that's his whole thing, you know. I don't know what he told you, but I know what he wants. He wants to keep his goddamn planet. This is his planet. It's his house, and he wants to keep it, like always. I told you. Giant fucking billions of years ago when we first got out of the place where we were at, God told us, and he told him right away, he told God, our father, he said, no, he was going to keep this new planet for himself and us, because damn it, we were doing his will by staying here when he sent us to this planet, And but he, we, it wasn't our father, it was an accident that smashed it and turned it into the earth and he said that, that ain't fair that he should be able to keep it and just we'll stay here and fuck off and leave us alone. And God told him that 